All right, guys, so I'm editing the video, and I notice there's no game sounds. So go ahead and get your fill of the cows mooing and me walking on the grass. Because unfortunately, there's no game sounds in today's video. Sorry. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. Oh, yeah, guys, welcome back. So, uh, audio might sound a little bit different today. Maybe not. Maybe you, maybe you won't notice anything. Uh, I just got some acoustic sound panels, so I know some people were complaining after I got my new microphone that I sounded a little echoey. Hopefully that cuts it down. That's the purpose of these panels. Um, I just got them. They're not hung up on the walls or anything just yet, so they might not be working correctly. But anyway, enough about that. We got a game to play. So, uh, last time we were here at this base... I set up, let's get back into this mode. You know what? Actually, hold on. <laughs> Look at all these guys here. It's crazy. They just keep multiplying. I get rid of them. I leave. I come back. There's more. <laughs> ah, that might be annoying later on. I don't know, but they kind of have taken over. They're kind of spawning everywhere. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to be a problem. Uh, when we get a roof on this, eventually, they might only spawn in daylight. I don't know. But it sounds like there's multiple guys. Yeah, <laughs> they're under here too. So maybe they are spawning in the darkness. Oh my goodness. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Uh, we might end up having to set up... Um, what is that? Grinders? Like everywhere to get rid of these guys? I don't know yet. But anyway, guys. Anyway. Um, I did make some changes here. And I extended this room out a little bit further. I wasn't sure if it was going to be big enough. You can kind of see, like, right there is where the room kind of cut off before. And I have expanded it out this much more. Um, I got talking with DMAC, and we were talking about the auto-crafting. And he said the room that I had there was enough for, you know, a little bit of crafting. And it, it might get me by, but if I'm going to set up, you know, auto-crafting for lots of things, I'm probably going to want more space. So, you know, I just decided, let's just make this room bigger. Uh, if it's too much room, it's fine. We can always... Um, you know, put things further apart or whatever. Things don't have to be super compact. I mean, this is a void age. We can make things as big or as small as we want. Bigger is generally better. Uh, so I did find a glass pane that was seamless uh, when put into the glass cover form and you cut up into micro blocks. These are the thickened glass. What is this from? Uh, extra utilities? So yeah, this particular one has the glass panes or I guess these are glass covers when you turn them into micro blocks that don't have any separation. So yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. And then I cut up some coal blocks. These are just coal block strips. And I put those all the way around. Uh, we got little nooks in the corner here. Kind of hard to see probably. But otherwise, the this corner looks like... Whoops. <laughs> Getting a little too crazy there with my pickaxe. Without those there, the corner looks like that. I kind of felt like we needed this little fella right there and then a little nook on top. There. Kind of squares. Unfortunately, you do see this guy, this little line, but I don't think that's a big deal. So anyway, we got this room done. Oh, oh yeah, there's one more change here. <laughs> uh, so this is marble. Guys in the comments, you guys have told me marble would probably look pretty good matched up with this enamel wall which it does uh this is the quartz this also looks pretty good i think this actually looks better on this side than the marble does the only problem is i just noticed this a little bit ago uh the quartz doesn't have a connected texture on this side so you can see the separations in it ah just when i thought i was going to use the quartz <laughs> nope <laughs> so i think we will end up just using the marble another thing i found out after messing around with XB and DMAC that you can't, I think it's shift, left click, yeah. You can shift left click to get the blocks out of these carpenter blocks using a hammer. So that's what we're going to end up doing. I'm going to get all my quartz blocks back. I got to let go of shift to get my, my blocks for the magnet. Give me, give me, yep. So I need to go and get a little bit of marble to refill this all in. Uh, give me. Now, actually, is it shift or is it just left click? Oh, no, I did a bad thing. Okay, yeah, definitely shift left click. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you can turn these carpenter's blocks and you can change them into different shapes by doing the right click or shift right click or something like that. Uh, I find it very difficult to get the one that you want. I think it's easier when you have these things on your hotbar 
and you shift scroll wheel on them. I don't know. There's different ways to change what these things are. And seriously, guys, seriously. I know you like making noise and everything, but we can't be having that. That is just getting a little bit out of control here. And bye-bye. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I need a little bit of marble to finish that off. And these guys, seriously, they are, like, invading my base. This is my base. This isn't your base. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another thing about these guys, they don't like you. Well, at least they don't like me. If I get near them, they walk away. Like, every time. And it's not just random. They will always walk away from me. They're like, forget this guy. <laughs> uh, kind of like ocelots, I suppose. Except they don't run really fast away. All right, so we want a marble. Let's grab a little bit of this stuff. Yep. And we will just go ahead. Did I not get rid of all the guys over here? Or did more spawn? I don't know. All right, well, we'll just go ahead and fix this right up. Put the marble in here. It's not going to be as bright. That's the only thing I don't like about it. I do like the fact that it is like a connected texture. You can't really see the, uh, the borders between the blocks, which that's kind of what I was going for. So I'll do this a little bit quicker here. There, whoop, missed one. That is what I was going for. All right, I think I like it. Um, also, I had a pretty cool um, reply on Twitter of what I could do with this floor here. Um, I can't remember the username of who sent it to me. I apologize. If I do use that, I'll definitely find out <laughs> your username and give you credit. Uh, but basically what it was is we come into this room and this is open down here, so like that's all broken out. And the floor is probably four blocks lower, so this is like a bridge, a sky bridge across. And then there's like stairs that go down to a lower level down there. I thought that looked really cool. We might end up doing that, actually. Uh, we'll see a little bit later. Uh, what I want to do today, I want to move my applied energistics over here. I want to start getting drives and things hooked up, try and figure out what we're going to do with those. Uh, there's a lot of crafting that needs to be done. I'm going to have to craft a bunch of drives. Um, what are those called? Is it ME drive? Yeah, these things. I need to uh, craft a bunch of these things. I think we might start running low on diamonds. Yeah, we're down to 81. So that's going to give us like 40 of those diamond processors. Um... You know what we might end up doing? We might end up setting up our applied energistic system to accept uh, a large amount of stuff from quarrying. All right, so I tell you guys what. Let me do some stuff off camera here. I need to move things around. We need to get some stuff figured out, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I got our applied energistic system moved over here. Uh, very temporary stuff. We're still trying to flesh out what we're going to do here. So, yeah, we just got our ME crafting terminal here, the power acceptor. We got the test rack behind providing the power. Uh, we moved these other machines over so we have access to these guys. And then we have our inscribers. We have one for each press down here. And then we also have one so we can combine all the pieces into the chips. So I made myself a couple more of these ME drives, and I have made four 4K ME storage, dr storage cells, I guess is what these are. Um, so these are all the 1Ks as still we got two of them that are untouched at this point So we got a little bit more storage in that department uh, So I have a cable running directly underneath from our energy acceptor All the way over here just touching one of our ME drives The three of them are touching each other so those are all a part of the network So we got three items over here we got three Four is that it? I think that might be all the all the uh, items we have on this little ME network. You're only allowed eight items per network, and I believe these inscribers only accept power. I don't think they're actually a part of the network, so they don't count as part of the channeling system. So yeah, we still got a ways to go. We can definitely uh, add more stuff to here. We're not limited at this point. Uh, what we are limited on, though, is the materials required to make these 4K ME storage cells. So what I'm thinking is, um, yeah, I want to make some of these deep storage units. These are going to be used for mass storing the items we get quite frequently from our quarry. Uh, I think most of those items I still have in the quarry age. Let's go take a peek over there. I want to see how many items we have just so I know how many of those deep stores we're going to have to make. 
Uh, was it this one? Oop. My internet's gonna be a little laggy today. Come on. Yes, Quarry Age here. Okay, so let's go through our Quarry Age. And we have, what do we have over here? We have bees. That's not really a big deal. Um, what material is this? It's kind of hard to see. Structure. Okay, so that is marble. We got actually a bit of marble. Kind of forgot we had all that. Uh, yeah, that's our cobblestone that we have in the compressed form. And then over here we had our barrels and stuff. So we have regular stone because we're going to be doing silk touch. Do we want regular stone? Hmm. I don't think you can convert regular stone into cobblestone. So we might need a barrel specifically for stone. One specifically, I am say barrel. I mean deep storage unit. One for stone, one for cobblestone. And probably one for each of these different types here. I think this is what we're going to need. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine. Okay, so we're going to need nine. So we need to do this craft how many times? Well, three times. Okay, so now that we know how much of this we need, uh, we need plastic and then these reinforced strong boxes and this resident energy cell frame. Uh, this is with a redstone energy cell frame with some enderium ingots. We still have a bit of this left from when I crafted those previously. Uh, so that uses fused quartz or the hardened glass. We'll probably use fused quartz since they have a bunch of the nether quartz and then an electrum and a diamond. Okay, so that's not too terrible. Reinforced strong boxes, more of that fused. Is it fused? Yeah, we can use fused here. Uh, fused quartz and then the hardened strong box, which is a strong box in Invar, which is a chest and tin. Okay, I think we should be able to make those. I'm pretty sure I have all of that stuff. I just got done. Some stuff happening over here that I haven't seen yet. Oh, it looks like TFC actually has got a big reactor going. Oh, that's going much faster. Nice. Yep, there's TFC right now. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and do those crafts real quick off camera. Uh, yeah, let me get some of that stuff going, and we will be right back, guys. Oh, my goodness, guys. So I've been spending a bunch of time off camera here crafting. I had to make up some tester racks. I've had to make up many, many, many of the golden uh, chips, whatever those are. I can't, the engineering processors. Logic press. I don't know. Whatever those are. Anyway, um, I've made a bunch of different things. We're going to be hooking up our quarry here in just a little bit. Our quarry? Quarry? Quarry. Quarry. Yeah. I keep saying that wrong, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I've done some stuff here. We saw this cable before. This goes from our power acceptor, or energy acceptor. Runs all the way over here into our three ME drives we have up there. Nothing up there has changed, but what has changed is I have added on our deep storage units. Now, I was watching DMAX video, uh, I think it was the one he released Thursday? I don't think it was the one he released today on Friday. Anyway, I was watching his video where he shows if you have a basic network, you can only have up to eight items on that network, being like a storage bus or an interface or an ME drive or any of this stuff. You're only allowed eight items and then you have to get a controller. Okay. So what we've done here is we have made a sub network. So this is allowed eight items on a sub network. Uh, and you can connect these together in a weird way using an ME interface and a storage bus. So we're kind of like chaining these together. So this is our main network here. And at the very end of our main network, we have a storage bus. And that storage bus is reading an ME interface that's connected to another network here. Um, and the way we have this set up is we have these glass fiber cables, or I'm sorry, quartz fiber, which are connected to our main cable here. This all connects, but these quartz fiber, they don't allow like any data transfer. Basically, it only allows power. So we have the power going through here and over into this network. So this network has power. So all of these storage buses connected to these deep storage units have power. So we don't have to have another energy acceptor over here it's just taking it all off the same line so we this line terminates at a storage bus and then this line starts with an ME interface okay then we got the quartz fiber to disconnect the data but allow power to transfer just kind of loop around so this thing has power 
and it's its own little sub-network. So we needed more than six. We needed nine of these deep storage units. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six ME storage buses. Then we have an ME interface, and then we have, whoop, 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 <laughs> then we have a storage bus. So this sub-network ends at a storage bus, just like our main network over here ended at a storage bus. Okay, <laughs> so you're allowed eight items on this network, so we have these six ME storage buses, a seventh one here, and an interface. So that's eight items on this sub-network. This thing is maxed, so we needed another one. So here we go. Same deal, we got a storage bus, we got the quartz fiber, just allowing power to pass through, we have an ME interface, and then only three storage buses. So we can have three more if we wanted to, and then continue to chain this along. Uh, but this is all we needed for now. Uh, so these guys right here are set to a higher priority. Well, they don't really need to be 11, but anyway, I set them to a higher priority, and I have, um, what is this called, the filter? I can't remember what that's called. I don't think it's called a filter. Anyway, I have this set <laughs> to only allow granite in there, but since it's a deep storage unit, it only allows of one type. I think it would have gotten that anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, so, yeah, we got andesite here. We got diorite. Basically, all those different materials that we saw in the quarry age that I said we need a deep storage unit for, I have made a deep storage unit for. So we got stone, gravel, and cobblestone. Now, just to prove that this actually works, <laughs> let's see, if we go to the diorite, we got 235 in the system. We can go and pull those out. So we have no diorite in the system now. If we come back under here and look at our deep storage unit, they had the diorite in there. You can see it. It was there and now it's gone. So you can put it right back into this deep storage unit. This says 171, but you gotta uh, add up the 64 here. So it's like 235, right? I don't know. Math is hard. So we come back over here, diorite 235. Right, so it all works, it all links up. No controller, we're just chaining subnetworks together. Uh, that was what DMAX showed in his video. Um, I did have a problem trying to get this last one to connect. And the problem was I didn't do it with a storage bus and into an interface. I had the interface on the wrong side and the storage bus on the wrong side. And it looked like it should work, but the network couldn't read these things over here. And it took me a while to figure it out. That's why I was changing these priorities from 10 to 11 and all sorts of things like that. I guess I didn't change those over here. Uh, yeah, these are all 11. I changed all these to 10. I don't think those really needed to be bumped up that high, but we need it higher than our ME drives. Otherwise, things are going to come along the network and be like, hey, this is our closest storage. Let's just put them in there instead of going over into these deep storage units. Anyway, <laughs> so long story short, we have all of the storage we need to set up a quarry. All right. So we're going to have a quarry going in the quarry world. I think we're going to set it up to be huge. Like, huge, huge. Um, so we need a way to get those items from the quarry into our ME system. Okay, so this is the thing that I do all the time with ME systems. We have a Tesseract here for power, but Tesseracts can also transfer items and fluids. We just care about items. So we're going to do receive only on our Tesseract here. So our main base power Tesseract channel, number one, will... We can receive power everywhere, and we can send items back through this channel. This will go into our ME system. Right, so the only thing we need to do is stick an interface right here, right on top of that Tesseract, because it's going to be receiving items through it, and it's going to be connected to the network right there. Okay, so now we have that all set. All of our items are still here. We're still good on that. <laughs> uh, now that we have that set, all we got to do is plop down this quarry, put on our speed upgrade and our silk touch upgrade. I might even see at this point, if we can up this power, let's see, ender quarry speed. I don't know if we have the resources to make a higher tier. I haven't even looked at these before. Um, I mean, it's not much more power, is it? Speed two, speed upgrades and efficiency three pick. I think we can do that. And what about the speed three upgrade that requires a speed two plus a couple efficiency fives and stack upgrades? You know, I think I'm going to do these off camera real quick, see if I can get to our speed three. 
Yeah, let me do that real quick, and we will be right back, guys. All right, guys, so here we are at the spawn area, I guess our uh, little village area or whatever. Uh, so I was looking at the recipes here, and we can go ahead and make ourselves an efficiency book with 12 redstone. Book and quill, 12 redstone, efficiency 1. So I was just doing this. I was like, yeah, let's just click a stack in there. Like, whoa, wait a second. That's efficiency 5. Wow, okay, so we can do this in one go. We need an efficiency 3. I'm not, is it, is it 36 that we're going to need? Probably 36, right? Yeah, okay, so that we can make the efficiency 3 right away. That is awesome. I didn't realize we were going to be able to do that. Uh, Ender Quarry Speed 3 requires a couple of efficiency 5s. So we're going to need that and that. Um, what does that sound? Oh, oh my goodness, they put sounds on the jetpacks. Jetpacks have sounds now. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah, we updated to FTB Infinity 1.2.1. Oh, that sucks. He's got FPS. Haven't they always? It wasn't on before. <laughs> I don't know. I had a jetpack, and I don't believe it had the sound. They're saying it's louder now. Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't remember it. Okay, so efficiency 5. How much do we need here for efficiency 5? Because I don't want to... I guess we can see when the enchantment cost goes up. There it is. So 60. Okay. So I guess we'll do that. And I am going to need a bit more experience. There are some experience berries over here that I'm going to nom on real quick. Yep. Okay. Give me. Give me. Yeah, so we need to get up to, what was it, 29? I can't remember now. <laughs> but yeah, luckily I've been saving up some experience points here. Let's see. Whoop. Let's fly a little bit. Yeah, I know you can turn down the jump boost on the boots. I'm probably going to be doing that here pretty soon. It is getting quite annoying in my opinion. Yeah, 29 levels, perfect. So there's an efficiency 5. There's an efficiency 5. And there's an efficiency 3. Okay, is there a crafting table around here? We got these guys. So I should be able to do the tier 2. Maybe not, maybe not. Let's look at that again. So it's a, the speed 1, speed upgrades. Let's just hit that question mark. Oh, you know what? I never enchanted the pick. That would probably be why. Uh, so there, we'll do this and that. Can't do it that way. <laughs> That's 5 levels. Alright, so let's nom a little bit more of these berries. Don't want to go too high because I kind of want to conserve them. I think we're going to need some more here in just a bit. So there's an efficiency three diamond pickaxe. Um, this guy, this guy, we'll just go ahead and drop those right in there. Speed one and efficiency three. Awesome. Okay, so there we go. There's our tier two. Now the tier three, one of these stack upgrades, I forgot to make those. But we have two additional speed upgrades. In fact, we should be able to just head back. Real quick and make those. Yeah, my internet seems to be working a little bit better. It was like working kind of poorly for a while and now it's kind of come back. I don't know. It does whatever it likes to do. It's kind of frustrating, but I get I get past it. Um, so we wanted these guys. One and two. Okay, so we need that, 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 that. Okay, so we just need to enchant our picks real quick, and then we should be able to make this tier 3. I'm kind of interested in seeing how fast this is going to go. Um, I know it's going to use a bit more power. I think it said it was a... Yeah, these chunks, F3A. I think I need to restart my client or something. I don't know. But reloading those chunks seem to work. Yeah, I know it uses a bit more power, but I think we're going to be fine. Are these 5 levels to do this as well? No, those are 8 levels. Okay... There we go, there's eight levels, so there's that and that. And eight more levels. There we go, perfect. These berries are so good. Thank you, Slipkater, for setting up that farm. Awesome. So now we should be able to do our speed three. Oh, it's raining now. That, that, and this guy. Speed three upgrade power drain multiplier times two. Awesome. So we got Silk Touch. 
Speed three and our quarry. All right, so let me go to the quarry age. I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up as much as possible and we'll be back guys. Okay guys, so here we are in the quarry age. Uh, I got some things set up here and ready to go. So we got our Silk Touch upgrade and we got our Ender Quarry Speed 3 upgrade. So this should go super fast and it's going to Silk Touch things. I did notice that the last time I set up a quarry here, I uh, missed a line. So I'm going to be OCD about it and we are going to catch that line in our setup here. So I moved the marker over one and I got this marker set up 500 blocks that way and 500 blocks this way. So we're going to do a really large quarry. Hey cow. Bye cow. <laughs> yeah, and also you guys let me know in the comments that I didn't need four of these markers. I only need three. So it's very similar to setting up like the build craft quarry where you only need three of those laser things or the the redstone torch thing. I don't know, whatever they are. The Actually, they're not redstone. They're lapis, aren't they? Uh, the markers. So anyway, we got this all set up. The only thing left to do right now is to put the quarry in place. So let's go ahead and remove this block and let's go ahead and set down the quarry block. Um, did I mention I already have the Tesseract set up? <laughs> we have the Tesseract set on a private channel, so only I have access to it. Uh, we have item mode on this set to send only, so any items that our quarry makes will go into the Tesseract and be sent right over to our ME system. And we have energy mode, receive only. Since we don't care about fluids, fluids are blocked. Yeah, we're not doing anything with fluids at all. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and sit down the quarry. And we'll right click on it. Successfully established boundary. So if I right click on it again, 522 block scan. That is scanning rather quickly. Uh, so I guess I can get these back. Let's go ahead and fly over this way, like 500 blocks. Uh, do, 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 do. going too fast for chunks to load in. <laughs> yeah, people are on the server and you're doing that. You're going to cause them grief because you're just going to be loading up too many chunks. The server is going to slow down, things like that. Where is that marker? There it is. Oh, hey, it started way over here so we can kind of see what's going on with this thing. Oh, my goodness. That is going really fast. I really do hope... My ME system is able to handle this, and our power setup is able to handle this. Wow, look at that. It's like doing, it's got the particles going in four different rows at a time. That is crazy. All right, this is going to go really quickly, I do think. Uh, I'm going to come back over here. We'll go fast, 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 fast. Yeah, we need to go get our other ender marker. Let's see. So we're right here. Uh, which one is that? That is 54 and 80, so we need to go to negative 54. Oh, that wasn't 80, was it? That was like 100 or something. <laughs> yeah, we need to go this way on the negative 54 axis. There it is. There it is. I'm lagged. Whoop. Okay, that was weird. A little bit of lag. Okay, we got the marker. Okay, I think we're good. So what I really want to do, I want to head back to the base. I want to see how our power supply is handling this. I want to see how our AE system is handling this. By the way, I did chunk load our applied energistic system. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. Also, I've heard that the ender quarries, like if there's nowhere for blocks to be put, they don't spill out all over the place. It just stops working. So if, for instance, our base is unchunk loaded, we're not going to cause a huge problem. Things just won't happen. So yeah, I did stick a chunk loader right here. And this guy is set relatively small. Let's show the lasers. Yeah, it's just set like that. It's just kind of just doing this little area here. It's not very many chunks, like 25 chunks or something. It's not that bad. So we'll hide that. Let's come over to our AE system. Let's look at, I don't know, stone? So we got 20,000 stone. Oh my goodness, that is so much stone coming into our system. Let's just verify that it is, in fact, going over to our deep storage. I think it was this one. No, nope, that is gravel. That's cobble. Yes, okay. So we are, in fact, getting our stone into our deep storage unit. That is awesome. So I'm going to just assume everything is working the way it should be working. So next thing, let's come over here real quick. Why am I... Bouncing back and forth. Let's come over here real quick and let's look at... What did I want to look at? Let's look at this thing. Oh my goodness. 
So we're using 17,000 RF a tick? No, we're gaining that right now. So this is charging back up. Okay, here we go, here we go. So yeah, now you can see the status. I've changed this program a little bit. Uh, I made it so these are kind of even with each other, and I've added a percentage here, so that makes more sense. Uh, so this should go to the decharging phase here in a bit, I do believe. I think I set that to 85%. One more, three more seconds. Discharging, okay. So now we are gonna be running off the battery. So I'm curious, now that this is stopped charging, how much RF a tick are we using? Wow. 17,000, 18,000, 19,000, 20,000, oh my goodness. Okay, so this quarry and our applied energistic system together is using a significant amount of power. Now, if I remember correctly, this reactor here only makes 40,000 RF a tick, I think. Yeah, it looks like we're up to 23,000 right now. Wow, okay. So that is way more power than I was really expecting the system to be using. I think I'm going to have to stock this up full of Yellorium because we're going to be going through this real quick. That's the next thing. Uh, I think what I'm going to do temporarily is we're going to set up a couple of barrels and we're just going to pipe in the Yellorium and we're going to pipe out the Cyanite. I'm just going to do this kind of ghetto style for now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we need Cyanite and Yellorium. Yeah, we got plenty of blocks of this stuff. We're not going to run out. We also have 86 more. Well, 88 more of those. Oh, we need... These guys, yeah, the transfer node. Let's grab... I'm going to grab a third one because I need that for something else that I wanted to test. I want to see if I can take the items in our barrels in the quarry age and send that through the test rack using one of those transfer nodes. Okay, so barrel. So we're good. That's not what I want. <laughs> we want a barrel here. Let's go ahead and unblockify all of that. That's a new word that I just invented right now. Unblockify. And we'll take one of these and do that. So all this should be sucked into the system. Perfect. So we'll set another one over here. Yeah, this is like the first time we're actually using our system uh, quite extensively. Do that. I guess I didn't need that cyanide ingot. Okay, so there we go. Cyanide is being pulled out. Eulorium is being pumped in. This is going to fill up with a stack once it's done filling this up. That's 64. Now this will start filling. Yeah, that's fine. And we are now charging again. So yeah, this is going to be going through its on-off cycles quite quickly now. That is interesting. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to have to keep an eye on the Yellorium because I definitely don't want to run out. We have a 500 by 500 quarry, so that's going to be going for a while. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to the quarry age real quick because I want to test this out. If I can just pump those items uh, instead of taking a... Um, what do you even call that? Dolly? Instead of dollying each one of those barrels and things back, I would like to see if I can just pump those items through the Tesseract back, because that would be a lot more, a lot better, a lot more efficient, should we say. Um, so we got some pipes here, so we'll pipe, pipe, pipe. Maybe one too many pipes. Do that, that, and grab this guy. So that is sucking items out. Oh yeah, it looks like it's going through. So we'll do stack upgrade, speed upgrade. Is that all we need to do? I can't see what this thing is doing, but I do know it's pulling items out. Hopefully that's going where we want them to go. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I know there's a way you can see how much stuff is in these barrels. It's too bad that you can't do that. Um, it doesn't have like the stuff on the barrel. You know, it'd probably be better. Let's go ahead and undo this real quick. Let's try doing this on the limestone. We'll be able to see this happening because I'm curious if this is actually working. Where's the stuff I need? This guy. So do that and grab some of these pipes. Pipe. Pipe, pipe, pipe. Oh, yeah, I did that really weird. That's fine though. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So do speed and that. Oh yeah, okay, those stacks are going bye-bye, so that's going into our ME system back at the base, that's awesome. 
So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to pump out uh, all these barrels instead of dollying them back, like I said. Um, yeah, we're going to let our quarry go for a little while. Looks like it's going to be working just fine for us. 500 by 500. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a lot of resources, but we need a lot of stuff for what I got planned. All right, guys. That's it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. Likes always help. All right, guys. That's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.